الحمد للہ الذي فرض علينا صيام شهر رمضان شهر رمضان وجعله اهدى اركان الاسلام وصلى الله وسلم على خير الانعام نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه البرر الكرام وتابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان على الدوام Ahabatifillah, continue on in our jalasat or our jalsa regarding the holy month of Ramadan. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the hukum siyam Ramadan wa bayan fada'ilihi. That the benefit of Ramadan and the rulings, some rulings pertaining to Ramadan or the ruling pertain to Ramadan. We know Ramadan is fard as we mentioned, uh, fardul ayn, that every Muslim must fast if he's able, he or she is able to do so. And we know that Ramadan was legislated for something. What does it, what is the ayat that we mentioned before? Uh, which lets us know the maqsad or the purpose of Ramadan, what we're supposed to gain out of Ramadan. Huh? Kutiba. Who knows this ayah? Mumtaz Jiddin. So our purpose is to gain taqwa. Kutiba alaykum siyam. Kama kutiba alladheena min kablakum min kablakum la'allakum tattakun so ya ayu alladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyam O you who believe fasting is prescribed for you similar to the way it was prescribed for those before you in order that you will gain taqwa and we talked about taqwa before we said that it is staying away from the muharramat that Allah has prohibited and it's doing the awamr the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the ahadith which lets us know that Ramadan is so important and that it's an arkan al-Islam, it's a pillar of Islam. And we mentioned that a pillar is what holds up, uh, we use a, a pillar in many big buildings, we use pillars. This desk doesn't have a pillar but instead it has legs. And this is a similitude of Ramadan to Islam. That Islam is built on five pillars and one of those pillars is fast in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Buni al-Islam ala khams, shahadatan la ilaha illallah, wa anna muhammad rasulullah, wa akim al-salat, wa ita'i zakat, wa al-hajj, wa sawm Ramadan, wa hajj al-bayt. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam is built upon five pillars, the shahada, the testimony of faith, faith, which is bearing witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. And to establish the prayer, to pay the zakat, and to make the pilgrimage, and to fast the holy month of Ramadan. Those are all the pillars of Islam. And the point of mention in this hadith is that it shows how important Ramadan, fasting Ramadan is because Allah made it a pillar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned it as a pillar of Islam. Ahabatifillah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Anna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aqal, Salawat al-Khams wal Jumwa ila al-Jumwa wa Ramadan ila Ramadan mukaffirat ma bayna hunna idha ijtanibu kabair In the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu akhrajahu Muslim The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the five daily prayers and Jumwa to up to the to the next Jumwa, the following Jumwa, and Ramadan to Ramadan are all things that expiate your sins. I mean, they get rid of your sins as long as you stay away from the major sins. So this Hadith shows us 
that your five daily prayers, if you pray Fajr, from Fajr to Dhuhr, you pray Fajr and Dhuhr, those sins that you did between Fajr and Dhuhr will be wiped out except the major sins. Likewise, between Dhuhr and Asr, that those sins between Dhuhr and Asr that you did will be wiped out as long as they're not the major sins. The major sins you have to make Tawbah from. And Ramadan to Ramadan and Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah. So the point being that Ramadan will be a means for you getting rid of your sins except the major sins if you don't make Tawbah. So that's another benefit of Ramadan and another hadith of Abu Huraira. رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in another hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he said whoever fasts Ramadan with full iman, expecting reward, you know, believing in the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa taala, believing in Allah tabarak wa taala. And expecting his reward and the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him with, then Allah will expiate all of his previous sins. So again, as the ulama mentioned, because other Dalil shows us that except for the major sins. So the point being that Ramadan is an expiation of your sins by fasting the holy month of Ramadan. And with regards to that, we gain from that hadith that the one who fasts, uh, who fasts with iman, iman billah, uh, and is pleased with the obligation of fasting. They're pleased that Allah has legislated this fasting for them that they fit one of the conditions for having those sins removed, expiated. And the second condition, which we gain from this hadith as well, is that the one fasting is seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and expecting reward from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala when they're fasting. So you don't just fast and think, oh, I'm probably not going to get rewarded for this. No, you don't think negative, but instead you're, ho you're hopeful and you expect that your Lord is rewarding for you, that you're not just gaining a dry mouth and a hungry stomach and losing weight for no reason, but instead it's to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal and that Allah for sure will give you reward for it. So if you meet those two conditions that you have Iman Billah, you believe in Allah, and you expect his reward, then bi idnillah you'll be of one of the faizin, you'll be of one of those who are successful, and you'll be of those who have their sins uh, expiated. Another benefit mentioned about uh, fasting the holy month of Ram Ramadan is also a hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, and a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله قال الله كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا إلا سيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به والسيام جنة وإذا كان يوم صوم أحدكم فلا يرفض ولا يسخب فإن صابه أحد أو قاتله فليقول إني أمر صائم والذي نفس محمد بيده الخلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريال مسك لصائم فرحتان يفرحهما إذا أفتر فرح وإذا لقي ربه فرح بصومه in this hadith, this hadith has so many benefits. In this hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that Allah the Almighty said, this is a hadith Qudsi. This is a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was mentioning about Allah, that Allah said. Allah said 
that every deed of the son of Adam, meaning people, human, human beings, is, uh, is for him. Except fasting. For verily, it is for me. Fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I reward him for it. And fasting is a shield. So first we learn fasting is a shield. It protects you from the muharramat. It protects you from the hellfire. وَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمْ صُومْ أَهَدَكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفَضُ So if one of you is fasting, then do not speak uh, bad words or in curse. And do not have wasteful uh, wasteful and unbeneficial and sinful speech. And if someone curses you or tries to fight you, then say to them, Verily I am fasting. And then the Prophet and then he said, Walladhi nafsu Muhammad bi yadihi. And by the one whose soul Muhammad uh, whose, whose Muhammad's soul is in. By, excuse me. The one whose hand Muhammad's soul is in. Verily the breath, uh, you know, the bad breath, because when you're fasting, your, the, your stomach, of course, you, you, get, you have a, a smell that comes out. Verily the smell of the mouth of the person fasting is more beautiful and more beloved to Allah than the smell of misk. And then he said, for the fasting person is two times of happiness. The happiness, one of the, ha the times for happiness is when he breaks his fast. And the other uh, time of happiness for the fasting person is when they meet, when he meets his Lord with his having fasted. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith has many benefits and I think they're self-explanatory. But as we learn from this hadith, that first fasting is a shield. It protects you from the hellfire and it protects you from doing sinful deeds because when you're trying to fast, you're trying to protect yourself from sin and, the, and so forth. Also fasting, uh, that you can harm the reward, lessen the reward of your fasting when one of you, uh, is, when you speak bad words and if you're cursing. This doesn't break your fast, the person who's cursing, but it lessens the reward. It takes away some of your good deeds. And if someone is going to fight you or they're cursing you, they want trouble from you and they're cursing you, you should do everything possible to avoid it and just say, I'm fasting. Verily, I'm fasting. Leave me. We also learn from this hadith that the fasting per persons, even though we regard it as bad breath, it's unpleasant to us, that their breath, their dry mouth, is more beloved to Allah as a smell because they're doing it for His sake than the smell of misk, even though misk it smells so nice. But that smell is more beloved to Allah, to Allah Azza wa Jal because it is for His sake. You're doing obedience to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You're doing Ta'atillah, obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we also learn that the fasting person has two times of happiness and we mentioned them. What are the two times of happiness again? When you break your fast. When you break your fast. And when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means fi dunya wal akhirah. That means in this life as well as the hereafter, there's a happiness. So it's very good to remember. This is why it's important we re read these ha hadith to remind us. Because Ramadan's coming up. It'll be next week, bi'idhnillah. So we need to go in there 
with full iman, believing in Allah. We're fasting not because we're, we're trying to uh, slim down. We're not fasting because we, we want to have dry mouth. We're not fasting for any other reason, but we're fasting to come closer to Allah because it's obe and we're expecting the reward of Allah and we believe in Allah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.